Hey everyone, I have a very special podcast lined up for you today. It's with a man named Dennis Sumlin. You'll be hearing his voice in a minute. Before that, I thought I'd give you a quick update about what's happening with me, what's happening at this end of life during this time. So, uh life is rolling on. It's happening, it's moving forward. Uh I'm learning to deal with new situations and circumstances i'm learning to be a stronger person and uh, i can share this yesterday i had a very very beautiful and unique discussion with one of my teachers he's currently training me to appear for a very important exam he's uh, training me to appear for the upsc exam and uh, one of the things he said is the work you should do should be disconnected from your emotional life so it shouldn't be an emotional motivation for doing things it should be done because things need to be done and if you feel bad or sad or if you feel uh, grumpy all of it should be noted and the work shouldn't stop and i found that advice really sound because when i look at it i stopped the podcast because of a very emotional kind of reason and i have also seen that if i keep doing work the emotions may stay and they may slow down my work but in the long run it also helps me get over what i'm facing it also helps me move ahead and that's what's important if we stop work to really focus on the emotion then we are actually stopping work and we are trying to understand the emotion and that d- leads us to nowhere it doesn't make us productive so this was what he shared with me yesterday and i found it re- uh, very very helpful i am currently uh, preparing to be an ias officer that is someone who is responsible for the country's working for the country's function uh, in the sense of public servant and i thought that will be a good role for me in the future because i feel the need to serve society apart from that i am playing golf i have not been very regular but i am trying to be and my golf coach with the two golf co- coaches they have a lot of expectations for me one of them keeps calling me tiger and uh, in india you call people you call a youngster a tiger but he also means to call he also calls me tiger because tiger woods was one of you know, is and one was one of the greatest golf players he may not be in prime form but he is considered one of the best golf players so he calls me tiger with reference to that too uh i go for drumming and vocals i have very nice teachers there too and uh i'm podcasting so i'm putting up podcast i've started a new podcast called the education theory and that is on soundcloud i would like you to hear that and uh check it out because that is an initiative towards the education sector of our country and i'm trying to hold relevant discussions about education so that people can be more aware and so that people can move towards a better education system i know a lot needs to be done but this is the smallest step that one can start with uh after that uh, there's a newspaper which is of course the sponsor of this podcast the tushar times newspaper the at the rate the underscore tushar underscore times i've got a lovely idea for this newspaper on instagram and i'm trying to implement it so it is taking a while i haven't uh, been up at it for around a month but maybe if i get my hands uh, i'll get my hands dirty and try to push it i'm going for a week to uh, hyderabad which is a city in india so uh i will be with one of my family friends over there and it'll be a relaxed environment 
I'll try to work on some material on the Tushar Times and put it up on maybe the blog or the Instagram page. Till then, I wish you well, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. This is a podcast for teenagers and uh, who are people, maybe children who are becoming teenagers, and maybe. those of you who are going through the struggles mentioned over here even if it's not being a teenager it could be in any uh, aspect or age of life stage of life and after hearing it if you feel you can help someone someone out please share this podcast so that they have some sound advice by someone with some perspective Dennis is a really great guy he's been a good friend and uh, it's nice to have been associated with him i have another podcast coming up that's going to be about sexuality and it it is a tough topic for me to come out with because even though i had a vision for this podcast that it's going to be open and there's going to be free discussion when it came to actually uploading it i felt a little scared and i'm going to work on it i'm going to work on the podcast and i'm going to upload it it's to tell you that i am starting the, i am taking the first step and yes i have a lot of relatives who are following this content but when you look at it it's the human story so there's nothing to be ashamed about from my point of view and uh, I think it will be taken in the right spirit and it will be shared also among more people in the right spirit so that the stigma can be stigma which I perceive to, for it to be can be removed. So you can wait you can look out for the next episode that's also going to be a nice one. It's going to be about sexuality and I'll uh, reveal more details about it maybe on social media. Till then please enjoy this podcast sponsored by the Tushar Times newspaper and uh produced by the Tushar Broadcasting Company <laughs> I wish you a pleasant listen a note the audio quality for most part of me speaking is not very clear because I think there was some kind of connection mishap with the mic and uh, the audio that you're listening to is being recorded directly from the mic of my computer so obviously that's not a nice quality but i've tried to dub it down i've tried to uh take out the hiss and stuff so i've made it a little nicer it's not as nice in the, as this obviously dennis side is pretty good i am uh, sorry for oh, that i didn't oh, realize that it oh, took place oh, like that but one. I Everybody hope you can take a good, take away a nice message because show, you can still hear my voice. Thank you. Yes, you yeah. And enjoy the podcast. I'm here today for you. His name is Dennis R Sumlin. Have I pronounced that correctly? Awesome Dennis and it's super it's it's really great having you over here. Let me just introduce you to my great guest Uh, so dear listeners dennis is from new york city from the like the most the busiest city in the world i mean in usa i think because mumbai is in india uh, <laughs> he is a certified coach and a speaker his hobbies include creating things he likes to do voice overs for cartoons and basically he lo- loves to create things Have I? Um, yes, I have. I, I actually have. That He was a big number one hit here in the United States. And R and B music. Have you Have you heard the song Havana? Yeah, yeah. That's actually a good song. Yeah. I, I don't like the guy in it, like the the rapper part. Like I don't like that part. But I, I like I like the song. Yes, the yes. song is I'm cool. I'm kind of hooked to that song. <laughs> Yeah, I li- I like the initial part. I skip I skip the rapping part and then get back to the Havana na na na. Right. Then um 
uh, there is also you also are into a lot of reading research and you read about uh, health sexual health and well actually uh, I'm, I'm a confidence well coach so it's really uh, about men. yeah so it's not just and about relationships it's about relationships uh, yes but it's also about coach. um connecting better with yourself it's also about just developing a productive confidence healthy coach. uh lifestyle in general you know Mm -hmm. Right, right, and uh, yes, I interview you guests and I cover issues around men's podcast, development, you know, relationships, like, you um, intimacy. And, you interview uh, guests and cover you know, issues. Uh, purpose, you know, life path, purpose, you know, things around those topics. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that podcast. <laughs> it's called Pop Tops. And right, right. It's called and Pop Tops, hobby, and it's a, a podcast that um, looks at top. 10, it's, a, it's a podcast that looks at top ten songs well, in the United the States um, from 1890 to the present. Um, and each one of those episodes okay. um, goes on a certain goes on a certain theme. Your your uh, voice is a little is cracking a little, it's sounding a little robotic. Oh, oh okay. Um, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. So yes. Um, so pop tops. You yeah, just just go back to talking about your music part. Okay. Yeah. So pop tops is an hour long music program. Um, we look at mm -hmm. top ten hits in the United States from 1890 to the current. Whatever the current, okay. whatever the current is at the time, and each one of those, uh -huh. each one of those shows goes by uh -huh. goes by a theme. So, for example, I'll one episode I'll look at top ten songs with a name in the title. Um, okay. Or for we were talking about Havana earlier, the song I have a, a uh -huh. I have a pop tops that looks at top ten songs with a location in the title, like Havana. So that okay. that song okay. will be there. Right, right, right. So has Havana featured? Um, Havana has not featured yet. It's a song that came out last year. I haven't done what's called uh, the Map Quest Pop Tops lately. Um, okay. when, I, okay. when, I do, okay. when I do that theme for Pop Tops, then Havana uh -huh. will be there. It was the number one hit in the United States. Right, right, right. And uh, also, uh, ha have you have any songs of the Eagles? Have you heard of the band The Eagles? I, I love the Eagles. The Eagles are a great band. Awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> Too good. Yeah. So, ha have you ever featured the Eagles in one of them? Oh yeah, there's there's lots of Eagles songs I've featured in there for different reasons, and they have a whole they have decades of music and decades of top tens, so a lot to choose. Oh wow. Okay, I should definitely check this out. So this is called Pop Top. Pop Pop Tops. P O P T O P S. Pop Tops. Pop Top. Awesome. And. Uh, Core Confidence Life and Pop Tops can be found on your website? Well, Core Confidence Life is on my website at coreconfidencelife.com. Pop, top, okay. pop Tops can be heard on internet radio stations. Um, the station that it's heard on now is called 195 The Globe. That's 195theglobe.com. Okay. And that comes on uh, once a week. Actually, okay. in India, it's coming on today, but in India time, it'll be tomorrow by the time it comes on. So I guess for y'all, it'll okay. be Tuesday morning. Right, right, right. So this this is like on the internet radio station. Yes. Got it, got it. And uh, what about yeah? Just just a quick. Uh, are you on Instagram? I am on Facebook and Twitter Facebook. and YouTube. I'm not on okay. Instagram. Okay. So on YouTube, we'll find you uh, on, you at on YouTube. You can find me, Dennis R. Sumlin, uh, Core Confidence Life. Same thing on Twitter, Dennis R. Sumlin. On Facebook, you know, the Core Confidence Life, you know. Right. S-U-M-M-I-N. S-U-M-L-I-N. S-U-M-L-I-N. S-U-M-L-I-N, yes. Right. I link those up on the show notes. And I think we have a nice introduction for you. And you can officially say hi to my listeners. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let's go. You know what's funny? Um, 
you, you know, you're, you're, um, this, this listenership is mostly from India. And then when I look at my stats on my website, India is actually the second or third uh, country that visits my website. So, you know, Whoa. good to have, you know, people from India visiting my website, you know, so cool. Wow. Wow. That's, that's really nice to know. I guess more traffic's coming your way. Yeah. So the top three is like United States, Canada, and India seem to be the top three visitors to my website. Oh, nice. Nice. Is it is it a new website? Is it a newly developed website? Um, the website itself is is fairly new because I had a different business name a few months ago, um, and mm-hmm. so it's, it, it's became the Core Confidence Life. So that actual name is right. maybe seven months old, but my business was before that. It's just under a different name. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. So, uh, uh, listeners, we we've got Dennis here to talk about some very, very interesting topics. And he's going to cover things that you can't normally talk about with uh, people in other areas of life. Because like I told you, like he told you, he's a confidence coach. And I requested Dennis to speak about helping teenagers with self-esteem and building their confidence during their developing and growing years. And these are not really covered in podcasts because the target audience of most podcasts is the entrepreneurial age, that is the 20s, the 25s to 35. And uh, there are a few, there are very few podcasts which are covering young, young, uh, I mean, mental health for the youth. And I felt that it's very important But I don't have the perspective that a coach may have had by coaching a lot of people. That's why I've invited Dennis to speak to all of you. Dennis, who's going to speak with all of you and going to share his perspective. And we're going to discuss some things and they may not really lead to a conclusion, but they can start a discussion and give you some really powerful ideas. Right, Dennis? Yes, yes, sir. So, uh, we're going to start by talking about self-esteem in teenagers. And I wanted to ask you, you, you've researched about this, you've read a lot of books, and you even coach people. Have you coached teenagers? Actually, um, yes, I have. I've had time as a mentor to uh, teen boys, and I've I've mm-hmm. done that. I did that for ten years. So, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I, I've been a teen mentor before, and awesome. um, yes, yeah, this makes it even more perfect that you're speaking to our listeners, the audience, which I hope uh, some of them. I mean, many of them would be teen listeners, and will gain a lot of value from this. So. Uh, uh, yeah, also one more thing, Dennis lives in New York City, so he, he's close to a lot of buses and trams and trains, so uh, welcome those noises every now and then. <laughs> every now and then, yeah, every now and then you're going to hear the train go by, the, the train <laughs> going by, so. Right, right, that's a subway. Um, that's the, well, that's, that's an, that's an above ground train. Um, I'm by a mm-hmm. bunch of them. So the one that you're constantly hearing is the one that's, it's elevated track. So it's above the street. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. Cool. So we'll start with the first topic, self-esteem in teenagers. So I want you to talk about how an idea of self-esteem starts to develop in an individual and what are the crucial stages during which it kind of seeps in and sticks around with the individual and uh, gradually moves on with him for the rest of his life, his or her life? Well, um, there's three main stages that mm-hmm. happen when we're born through and until we get to become an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, the first stage is when we're first born. It kind of goes from zero to around maybe five or six. Mm -hmm. And that is the impression stage where we just kind of, our brains kind of absorb everything around us. You know, we're, we're babies. So everything imprints on us, you know? Um, So it's very easy 
to be conditioned by something because we're just that young where our brains are still growing and so they just absorb everything that's the you know the absorbing stage and then the next stage that it can go from seven to maybe 12 Mm -hmm. that that's the next stage of development where um we start to develop um idols and heroes and people to look up to so like if you're eight nine ten you might have someone you look up to whether it be on tv whether it be your parent your older brother or something Mm -hmm. that's when we start really looking up to people and starting to watch what others do in relation to uh in relation to us and stuff like that um the last major stage before we hit adulthood is in the teen years 13 to around 21 or so Mm -hmm. and that's when we get heavily influenced by society at large because mm-hmm. we're we're almost adults and we're looking for we're, we're moving towards that that independence that adulthood that what is it like to be in you know in this context we're speaking a grown man and things mm-hmm. like that so we are very susceptible to how people see us what our peers think of us how we fit into the larger society mm-hmm. and so those are the three stages and um, influences can affect us in different ways um, depending on what stage we're in. Okay. Um, and certainly we're talking about the teenage stage now, which yeah. is a very hard stage for a lot of people because there's so much going on okay. and there's so many different conflicts we have within us because we're caught between child and adult. Okay. Okay. Right. We are, we are talking about the teenage because uh, I mean, I'm kind of directing or having a target audience of uh, age population similar to my uh, age group that's like 15 to 23. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to discuss problems or issues that they may face while growing up as a teenager. Yes, absolutely. Um, Teenagers is a whole lot of problems or, or different things that teenagers are caught in between um mm-hmm. some of them and, and when you're a teenager it can seem like you can meet somebody who's let's say 17 mm-hmm. who seems like a grown man already right. and you can meet those that are 17 that seem like they're still five right. so <laughs> um, yeah, so the teenager years are a, a year where things are so drastically different from for each person right. but the things that are in but the things that are in common are things like you know self-esteem how to develop your self-esteem, self-confidence. Um, how do we? How do you fit in with everybody else? Right. Um, the in, your body image, um, hormonal, you know, uh, sex issues, yes. um, friendships, um, you know, college life. How how we're going to get our first job and right. all these firsts and all these different portals that we're walking through as teenagers. Right. And right. so, yeah, so it could be challenging. Yeah. Yes. So. Here's where we're experiencing everything for the first time again. It's like we, we're like our eyes are seeing the same things in a new perspective because we are getting into a new body. Yes. Our horm- the hormones that we go through puberty around 12, 13, depending. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our body changes. Our, our voice deepens. You know, our, we, we grow more. Our voice deepens. We start to have you know we start to have sexual urges right. we start to so we're getting we're, we're our, our body is becoming the adult body right so absolutely right so here's where i mean so many things start happening now there's a million issues that teenagers like all around the world face like some may start having conflicts with their parents some may try to want to fit into a group some may want to I mean, some of them, they get into drugs. Some of them, they get into alcoholism. I mean, the variety of problems, like it just keeps diverging. But if if we were to come to simplicity, if we were to, I mean, chop off everything and get down to the basics, and what would you say are three to five essential basic things to keep in mind while going through the teenage years because the problems may be a thousand or a million 
but if we just cut everything down to the basics, I think we can find the solution to each and every problem. Absolutely. Um, well, the first thing I will say, and I'll say it first, just to move it out the way, because I understand, you know, when you're a teenager, what I'm gonna, the first thing I want to say is, is things that maybe you don't like to hear as a teenager. I know I didn't like to hear that when I was a teenager either, mm -hmm. is that you have your whole life ahead of you. You know, you know, when, 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 you know, when you're a teenager, when you're 17, 18, 19, and you're not exactly getting everything you want, you kind of think, why? Why is this? How come I can't find my a partner? How come I can't you know, do what I want to do, whatever. But remember that you're still growing. You still, you know, the average human lifespan is near 80 years. Hey. Um, and we're talking if you're 17, 18, 19, with an average lifespan of 80 years, mm -hmm. you have a whole lot of time to figure things out, a whole lot of time to make mistakes, have successes. So just remember that if you don't have everything figured out right this second, mm -hmm. that's okay, because you've got if we're talking about like teenagers, mm -hmm. you got uh, 60 more years mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. to move through right. it. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. That's not to, that, does, that doesn't mean to dismiss what you want. Uh, just keep in mind that there's plenty of time to get it. That's right. number one. Um, yeah, I just want to quickly you know, ask you. We know like sure. we have our whole life in a, ahead of us, but why don't we feel so? Why, why do we feel urgent why do we feel this urgency to get everything now well because when you're a teenager you're 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 going towards independence you're fighting for independence inside and outside like you mentioned conflicts with your parents mm -hmm. we talked about earlier just high school college sex all these things are coming down on you because we're fighting for that independence as a teenager right. and we tend to be we tend to be impatient mm -hmm. You know, I want this job already. I want my house already. I want to be. I want to stop being told what to do by by my parents right. already. I want a girlfriend right. already. So we're we're we're, in, we're impatient right. because we're on we're on the brink of adulthood. We can taste right. it, um, and we've gotten tired of our parents standing over us like we're five, and we can right. taste it. And so we get a little right. impatient. Okay, awesome, awesome. That 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 makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And also, even though we know that, you know, most of us have a long life mm -hmm. ahead of us, when we're in that, when we're in that mm -hmm. moment, that's all, that's all we're thinking of. We're not thinking about, well, you know, I'll, when I'm 65, when you're 18 years old, you're not thinking about being hey, 65. Hey. So we're living in that moment of the anxiety of the rules of the conflicts. And we just kind of just want to make it through it. We want it all to be Right. over we're not really thinking about things 30 years right. down the line right 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 awesome cool i think this is answered you've answered me very well let's move on to the second second thing we should keep in mind the second thing that we should keep in mind i i, I think is as a teenager um be yourself okay you know um and be your, we can get more into being yourself and how to figure out to be mm -hmm. your best self but I, I said that second because a lot of times um and this is something i wish i had, was doing more of when i was a teenager mm -hmm. as well you know we get caught up with trying to be like other people you know we get caught up i want i'm the man i want to be the man or i want to be like that guy over there he's cool or um i want to fit into a crowd, so I'm going to do something I'm really not comfortable doing right. to fit in. Um, and it's important to remember that when you are your mm -hmm. best self, the people that will accept you will show yeah. up. You know, you don't have to be like the guy next mm -hmm. door if that's not how, if that's not really how right. you are. Um, I did this as a teen as well. Like, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be one of the mm -hmm. cool kids. I wanted to be one of the cool dudes that's looked at mm -hmm. a certain way. So then I would maybe act mm -hmm. a certain way. I wanted to be accepted. I would give my, I would give gifts to people I didn't want to give them to just to be yeah. accepted, you know? So just concentrate more on developing mm -hmm. who you are and less on trying to be like right. everybody else. Right. Understood. Again, I have questions. Sure. So when when you say be yourself, 
sometimes it, it's very difficult to accept the fact that we have to be comfortable in our own skin and show the world that we are cool with ourselves when we don't think we are cool. Then where do we find the self-assurance form to be ourselves? Where, like, instead of speaking our own voice, we rather tend to just be quiet or not say anything because it's easier to be nobody than try to be somebody. And even tougher to be yourself than be somebody. So the three stages are like being a nobody in the sense having no say in what's going on. Then being a somebody in the sense saying something, maybe not something that's truly what you want to say, but kind of trying to keep people happy, keep, keep uh, everybody uh, like being aware of what everyone's thinking of you and being in that dynamic. And then the last is what you're saying, which is be yourself, in which you take the actions that even maybe scare you to death, but they're so authentic to you that like finally you feel happy. But while you're in that process, you feel so scared. So how do you deal with that? That's a good, that's a great question. That's a great question. So the things that I'm thinking of when you mm -hmm. ask this question, um, first, get to know yourself. Because sometimes we skip, especially as teenagers, we may skip the part of getting to know ourselves. You may skip right into wanting to be mm -hmm. one of the cool kids. So I would say, first, take time to get to know who you are. So maybe keeping a journal, mm -hmm. right? You know, keeping track of the things that you actually like, keeping a journal, writing things down. How do you feel after today, after a hard test, after you've been kind of reject, how do you feel about that? Keep a journal to really keep, keep you know, make, keep all your feelings, have an outlet for your feelings instead of bottling them up. Cause I think one of the things that happens with, with, with teenagers, especially those who are a little less confident, they keep yeah. their feelings bottled up. And it just builds and builds and builds. And then we have all kind of unpleasant results out of that. And so, so first we need to keep um, an outlet to how we feel. Let the, let the outlet uh, use, use the diary or journal, yeah. whatever word you want to yeah. use as an outlet. Um, and be certainly be sure also start yeah. to get to know what you like, what you like um, outside of other people outside of, other, of the other kids right. in, the, in the schoolyard, outside of all that, what do you like? Make sure you develop a firm grasp on the things that interest you, right. the things that you like. Um, and don't be afraid to do some of those things by yourself. So, so for example, if you like, mm -hmm. if you'd rather study, but everyone else seems to be into basketball, but you haven't, but you're not, that's not your interest. Don't be afraid to study by okay. yourself every now and okay. then. Every now and then. Not all the time, right. obviously, but every now and then. Um, also, um, this takes a little bit of, mm -hmm. I guess, courage. Be start to be yourself openly. Share with what share the things that you like. So if, if people are talking about, oh, I like this. I'm into this show. I'm into that show. Start to talk okay. about what you like to to your friends mm -hmm. and what interests you. Um, and because sometimes we get shy, mm -hmm. you know, as teenagers. When we hear other people talking about stuff, we kind of get shy and don't want to say what we like, you know, because we might feel it, we might assume it's not as cool as everyone, even though we don't know that yet. Um, so be uh, courageous or brave enough to state what you like. If someone likes basketball, go, yeah, well, that's great too. But I also yeah. like hockey and I love hockey. So be, don't be afraid to say what you like. And you never know, you might find that someone else likes that yeah. too, we're just afraid to say it. Or you might describe it in a way where people who've never thought of it may be interested in that and you can kind of get right. them into what you like to do. So when you speak up and talk about what you like to do, you, especially as a teenager where other people are still trying to figure out things, right. you might spark interest. Right. So something very important you said was to be yourself first, you need to know yourself. And to know yourself you could start doing things like maintaining a journal and expressing your feelings and noting down your feelings. So how, yeah, how do you go about, do you, do you go about analyzing your journal and see, okay, this is how I'm feeling or do you just note it and 
just let it be a part of your natural routine what is the aim of having a journal well when i was young um the journal was generally to keep track of what's going on in the day um the stuff that it's in my journal uh, back when I was a kid was just stuff like what I thought about the teachers, how the day went, right. the, the, the girls I liked, um, the girls I didn't like, right. the people who got on my nerves, um, and my favorite teacher in class, right. like stuff, stuff like that. Um, because, and I think the, the benefit of keeping a journal um, is okay. to have an outlet for your feelings, things that you may be too ashamed to talk about. Maybe you would keep a journal on, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to talk about the fact that I like this 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 girl, or I'm afraid to talk about the fact that I was that I was bullied, and I and 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 I feel a little scared of this person because I was I, I feel bullied. Like being able to talk about these things and have an outlet for them is better than letting emotions build up, especially if they're negative emotions, or less, or especially if you're being bullied and you're kind of scared. Um, having an outlet for those feelings. Um, can help you come to, can help you sort out those feelings even right. before you're ready to tell somebody right right so uh, a journal basically helps you have an outlet for your emotions and feelings and thoughts yes and especially cuz sometimes it takes us a while before we feel ready to tell somebody something you know mom i'm i'm being bullied at school or this kid beats me up right. sometimes we're ashamed to say that as, as teenagers sometimes or or even other issues having to do with you know growing up and sexuality maybe you don't want to discuss you know oh uh, man I, I this girl was, was was looking good today or man I, I I feel a little bit embarrassed because I couldn't right. get rid of my erection in math class you know stuff that we, we we don't have we don't we want to say but we don't have the outlet to say it or we think we might be right. weird if we do say it the 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 journal gives us a space right, right. To, to let those so things out. What, again, uh, I'm just saying this because I know some people who feel that journaling is for babies or they, they, they have this perception that, that that's not for me. I, I'm sure it works for people, but that's just not for me. And these are the same people who are facing the problem. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I would I would then ask, do you have anybody else? Do you have mm -hmm. like a best friend that you can talk to about mm -hmm. issues you might be shy about? Because I, I think we're as humans, we're all uh, we're all communicating yeah. beings. We're all social beings. So if we have heavy emotions and heavy feelings, and we're feeling shame and guilt or embarrassment by things, and we have yeah. nobody to turn to. Right. Where does that leave it us? leaves us on our own. Yes. Leaves us on our own. And as you know, as mm -hmm. when you're 15, 16, 17, right. you're still learning about yourself. Right. You're still learning about how the world works. And then you have no one to talk to. You don't write things down. You don't have a best friend. You can't talk to your parents. You've got no one to talk to. That's a recipe for, you know, becoming antisocial. It's a recipe for creating more guilt and shame than right. there probably needs to be in the long term. Um, so right. I think right. that's an important so outlet. Even though it may take effort, I think it's a very healthy investment to just make it a habit to write down for 10 minutes. And even if it feels stupid, I guess it pays off along the way. Yeah, and it might feel stupid. And, 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 and you're not alone, you or if any other teenager listening to this is questioning, why would I just right. sit around and write, the, write these things down? Everyone, it, it, a lot of people right. are resistant to journal writing. I was too. When I was a kid, I right. wasn't. It would just, when I was a kid, I just wrote it down. But as an adult, when I was facing, oh, I got to do some more self-work, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it's it just writing things down. It just didn't, I had to make myself do it. It's something that a lot of people seem to have a resistance against because it doesn't seem mm -hmm. to appear to do any practical right. good, right. but it does. I maintained a journal and uh, there's some things that you really can't remember when you, uh, when you grow up and even revisiting such things makes you feel good. Yeah. Absolutely. A absolutely. And, 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 and Writing, you don't have to only yeah. write down the bad things. Write down the good yeah. things. Write down how happy you were 
that you got an A on the test. Write down how happy you were that right. this girl accepted your invite right. to go out tonight. Like, right. it's your also, uh, like you also learn to laugh at the things you found serious at that time. You laugh it off with something silly maybe in the future. Yeah, you, you yeah, yeah you have you have a chance of laughing at yourself. Like look back in your oh wow, when I was fifteen, I went through it about that. Like I was worried about this when I was sixteen. Oh, you know, you know, it, it, it's you got to learn. Part of part of being confident in yourself and having a good self esteem and, and and so forth is being able to right. Right. laugh at yourself. Sometimes. Yeah, I guess, and nobody wants yeah. to be laughed at, but they forget that if they start laughing at themselves, then being laughed at doesn't make a difference. Yeah, yes. No, no one wants to be laughed at. Definitely, um, and, and we can get into to ways of of uh, mm -hmm. handling that. But laughing at yourself, and and understanding that hey, nobody is perfect. We don't have this all figured out, um, and we're all learning as we go along. Learn to just laugh at yourself. Yeah. Laugh at some of the mistakes you may have made. Um, it just makes things a little easier. It makes you a little bit a little bit more relaxed yeah. about. The yes. learning process. You kind of become um, like more yeah. comfortable with yourself. Absolutely. And it, when you're more comfortable with yourself, it's harder right. for somebody right. else to make you feel bad. Right. Very important. And yeah. maybe some things we could write down in the journal could be like del deliberately writing things that, uh, like I used to write down affirmations. Maybe we could end by deliberately de deliberately writing uh, three, four lines about why I love myself or why I choose to love myself and end the diary that way or something like that to keep reaffirming. Absolutely. 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 But also yeah. make sure they're real affirmations. You know, sometimes you might listen to some of these podcasts or 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 uh, personal growth thing oh well this right now i'm a wonderful amazing person okay that's, okay those are those are generalities if you're going to write down affirmations write down things that are specific to you i like i appreciate the fact that i'm um that i'm good at math i appreciate the fact that i'm good at basketball I, I'm, I'm the king at basketball and that's true Right. Write it right. down. It could because be saying that, that I am, I make okay. an effort to be punctual. It could also be the smallest of things. Like I make an effort to be hygienic. Absolutely. And present myself in the best way to college or something like that too. Absolutely. Stay away from the general. Oh, right. I'm a good, wonderful, worthy person. Yes. Um, you are, but. In order to raise your self-esteem as a specific person, you need to hone right. in onto, on, into right. your own individual skills. Right, right, right. This was great. You know? So we kind of deconstructed how journaling can really help you in boosting your self-esteem during these crucial years. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and if it feels forced in the beginning, that's okay. But um, try to stick with it. And you'll find that it'll become natural and you're going to enjoy it. And also, it might bring out some creativity in you. Maybe the maybe today in right. your journal, you're not writing about your day. You're writing a poem. Right. Or you're, or you're writing a story. Right. Maybe this will unlock maybe someone some like creativity do it in you. In the form of a doodle, like Wimpy Kid. Yeah. Drawing. I used to draw. I used to draw <laughs> stick figures and make little shows when I was a uh -huh. kid. I had a whole book full of stick figures uh -huh. and these stick figures would all have magical powers um and it would just be something i'd do and it was creative wow. and, it, and it brought out creative wow. creativity in me super so we covered journaling and uh, i think we did our best to be more detailed and try to help our listeners understand what journaling journaling really is because when we just say journal like you said earlier that when we don't make them fully understand what we are trying to say and why we are telling them to do what we are telling them to do, they brush it off thinking it's not as important or it's not for them. But Yep. Because a lot of a lot of people think that when it comes to mm -hmm. building your self-esteem, becoming more confident in yourself, many people think that 
you're su- that you're supposed to do something mm. or wait for someone's approval. Um, you don't have to wait mm. for anyone's approval to start building your confidence. Mm. It starts from the, it starts from the inside, and then you take you take actions mm. in life based mm. on what's going on. So on the inside. is one big step you can take for yourself if you feel that today and right now is. Time you is high time you needed to step up and up your game and feel more confident and be happier within yourself. Right. Yes. Uh, another way here, which is um, it's not well, it can be it can relate to journalism, but it may not be the same as journaling. Also, okay. be, don't be afraid to do something new. If you one thing that I did when I when I was younger, mm-hmm. and I, I I'm kind of I'm kind of old and cruddy now. But uh, mm-hmm. when I was when I was young and 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 full of energy, okay. <laughs> I, I would do different things, new things. Like you know, um, if you mm-hmm. have an interest in doing something and you've never done okay. it before, find out who's doing so it. They'll do it. Very well said. Just find yeah. out who's doing it. Mm-hmm. Go do it. Or just yeah. go do it is enough. If you're interested, go do it. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's say you've never had an experience. Let's. Oh, I've always wanted to play. Right. I don't know, okay. I keep going back to sports. That's okay. the easiest no, thing to say, skating, I guess. Skating or something. Um, uh, well, yeah. I've always wanted to play. Skating. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I've uh-huh. always wanted to go skating. I've never done that before. All right? Mm-hmm. If you live if you live in a city where there's a, there's right. a skating rink right. or if there's one other person that likes it, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. You're going to see the more you do, right. the more you'll gain right. confidence in your ability to do it. And then I've heard about this competence, confidence loop. So the more you do something, yes. the more confident you feel about that. And the more confident you feel about that, the more uh, you, the more chances are that you'll push yourself to do something that's out of your competence, to gain competence in that, and then the loop keeps running. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to do something new, even if it's just for the, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. Let me see what that's about. Mm -hmm. And also remember, when you do something new, you're not making a commitment to do it forever. Mm -hmm. If you do it, you don't care for it. So you're not losing out on anything by trying something new. But if you don't try it out, you're losing out on an opportunity to feel more confident about yourself. Absolutely. Because life is about, you know, growing and learning. And the teenage years are the time where we uh, can experiment and start testing ourselves. Because, you know, we all, as teenagers, we test the limits with our parents. We stay out later than we're supposed to. Or we sneak a girl in the house or something like that. You know? Yeah, so why not test our limits in other ways? Like taking up a new hobby, uh, being a... Figuring out what right, something you've been right. curious about actually right. fits well with you, cool. you know. And then I'd also like you to talk about how, what should your mindset be when you're going out and really speaking out your mind openly for the first time? Because this is a huge, uh, it's, it's like a leap of faith and it's a big kind of step for a lot of people when they first speak out their mind openly. So what should their mindset be while doing that? Well, I would say that um, the principle to remember is that just remember that there's 7 billion people on the planet. Right. Not every single person is going to like what you said. Right. But that doesn't make you bad. So try to try to 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 make that separation between what someone thinks of what you say hey. versus the value of what you're saying. So if someone thinks that you're mm-hmm. a little corny mm-hmm. for collect for going skating, that doesn't make hey. you a bad person for skating. That just means that they don't like it. Mm-hmm. So understand that when you speak out, um, hey. people's judgments of you hey. have nothing to do with you. So, so you shouldn't be... Uh, we shouldn't be too yeah, that, yes. taken aback by if their judgments approve of us or not. Exactly. And and, and, and I know that's something that's at first is a little difficult mm-hmm. to, to understand that someone's right. judgment of you doesn't have anything to do with you. 
and 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 some people are like it does it. They're talking to me. Well, right. yeah, but right, right. their judgments of you because has that's to do how with they them. perceive I, you. That's how their life is. That's how they perceive their world. And it's just a statement. Yes, and, and the 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 idea that people, yes. And the, so, and the idea of everyone has an opinion works both mm-hmm. ways. Just like there are people who will not like right, you for something, right. there are people who it's will like you for the same thing. It. You haven't found them yet, and the only mm-hmm. way you're going to find people who right. like, love, and right. respect you is to speak out. You're not going to find any friends right. that are interested in roller skating right. if you never tell right. anyone you're doing it, awesome. or if you so, never do it. I like that uh, mindset of this, that there are seven billion people, and that just because these three, four friends uh, didn't, uh, I mean, didn't uh, kind of go along with you or they said no to you, there's always another group of friends who you can meet, and you'll find someone along the way. Absolutely, and and that's a good another thing that you're bringing up. I want to highlight. Okay. One friend doesn't have to be your everything. So you know when you know just because these two friends that you that you really like mm-hmm. and you're really close to, just because they don't care for something you're doing, that doesn't mean that somebody else won't. You, those two friends you have don't have right. to be your only two friends, and they don't have to serve every purpose for you. Right. You can have different right. friends for different purposes. Cool. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you can have a, you can have a study buddy, and then you can have a, a person uh-huh. you go go skating with, and that person you go skating right. with doesn't right. always have to right. like everything else you like. So uh, we've we've covered two great and interesting topics. One is that you have your whole life in front of you, and the second is you got to be yourself. So we were talking of the, uh, let's keep it. Let's call them three uh, things you can keep, like cutting down to the basics, or three things to remember while you're going through your teenage years. And now we are going to move on to the third one, and the final one for this podcast. And yes, get it. The third thing. Okay. So, so yeah, the third thing to keep in mind. Um, yes. as a, a teenager, um, absolutely, um, is that you only have to meet, right. uh, your approval. You only okay. have to meet your approval. What does that mean? Because, well, mm-hmm. if you are satisfied mm-hmm. with the things that you like mm-hmm. and the things that you're into and the route that you're going, you that that's that's fine. You don't have to design your life path by anybody else's dictates. Like you don't have to live to okay. satisfy what your parents want for you mm-hmm. if that's not what you want. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do right. what your brother is doing if that's not what you want to do. Your life, you are in ultimate right. control of your life. You have the final say in what mm-hmm. you do with your life. And so mm-hmm. keeping that in mind as, as you go into adulthood, you don't have to design your life in any other way but the ones that feel right to you. So what happens as teenagers and, and sometimes adults get uh, carry this over too, is that we think that our road or our path um, has to meet somebody else's approval. Like we have to go into something because our parents want right. us to. We have to go into something because we think we should or it's the right thing to do or whatever. And what I say is that we, our lives should be designed based on what what we find satisfying. Right. So let's say if our parents want us to be a lawyer, but we'd rather mm-hmm. be a singer, guess what? Um, we should try to pursue becoming right. a singer because if we start going down the road that other people mm-hmm. want for us, 
it could breed dissatisfaction with our lives and unhappiness. And then we'll spend like eight years in school as a, becoming a lawyer and establish a practice and still right. be miserable because we didn't do it. We didn't do it because we wanted that to be our path. We did it because it makes our parents right. happy. Our father was a lawyer. I'm keeping up the tradition. So one thing growing up as we design our lives is that, you know, um, People may not like to hear this. This is a mm -hmm. little grim, but, you know, our parents won't be around forever. Um, our teachers, the adults that helped raise us won't be around right. forever. And we have our own lives right. to live. And it's best if we can get, get ourselves to do things that we really, really enjoy. Something that really hits us in our skill sweet spot or our talent sweet spot. Something we're right. passionate about rather than somebody else deciding how right. to for right. us. Right. Definitely. And I wanted to ask you, how how is this? This seems to be similar to, is this, how is this different from the previous uh, point, which was be yourself? How do you want to distinguish it from that? Well, I distinguish it from that because I was, when, I, when we were talking about being mm -hmm. yourself, I was more talking about um, just living your life every day, like the things you're into, the 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 friends that you the, the friends that you have, the hobbies that you established, right. uh, the you know okay. all that stuff. Now it's now it's a little bit more broad, as in how are you going to design your life when you become an adult? What are you going to be doing as an adult? What are your long term right. goals? And sometimes our long we design our long term goals after what someone right. else wants for us. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, the earlier one was about being yourself and getting your, getting to know yourself, and not missing out that important aspect of life during growing up. And the later one, the third point about you have to meet your own approval is after getting to know yourself and after being yourself, you you need to stick to what you approve of yourself rather than going down a beaten path. Absolutely. And and yes, they, they, they mm -hmm. are similar because, I mean, they are similar. You're, you're definitely right to, to bring that up, mm -hmm. that they are similar. It's the same thing. It's, it, they are similar in the sense of being yourself. But we face so mm -hmm. much pressure from all different areas, especially mm -hmm. as a team, I think it's important to point out both the 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 the, the everyday mm -hmm. aspect and also the long term right. aspect because sometimes we're thirty right. years old still living out what right. our parents want. Right. Yeah, there, there's so many examples of uh, people who who have taken up a job because that's their parents' wish. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong. There's, there's, and also, there's nothing wrong with pleasing your parents. There's nothing wrong with having right. happy parents. But there's a difference between having happy parents and 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 depriving yourself right. of happiness. We need to right. strike a balance right. between the two. And, and if it means, oh, well, uh, I'm going to disappoint my father a little bit by not joining mm -hmm. his company. All right. Well, maybe it would be a letdown right. to him a little bit. But we got to make a decision on how are we going to mm -hmm. feel when we chart our career path in our life, even if, even down when it comes to marriage and relationships. Some people get married because they think they're right. supposed to, right. but they really don't want to. Right. Right. Great. So I think we have three, uh, three points. I mean, I'm sure there may be a lot more, but even if we concentrate on these three points and kind of analyze it by hearing this podcast and reflecting on what we have just heard, the three points which were uh, that you have your whole life in front of you, you have time, this isn't the end of the world. Then the second one was learning to be yourself and learning more about yourself. And that that is for a day-to-day -day basis in the sense learning to be more open and showing more of your personality day by day, bit by bit to people. And in the overall picture, which is the third point, to pursue a path and track that 
suits you completely and suits your i mean which comes out of your heart and your gut feeling drives you towards that pushes you to do something do something that like that rather than uh take uh, do something for someone's approval your parents or your teachers or something else yes and, and i think that when i was a teenager i certainly wish i uh didn't pay so much attention to mm-hmm. people's approval because i had needs and wants and desires and drives right. and i did do them but i i allowed myself to be shamed by oh what what are you what are you you know creating these things for mm-hmm. that's a waste of time and so i let that get into my psyche and i started well maybe i'm maybe i'm wasting right. my time but i wasn't right. i was pursuing what i wanted um so i i wish i was less recept- re- receptive to right. pressure when i was a kid i wish i had just kind of been myself a little less guilt free right. back when i was right. younger awesome And is this has been an amazing podcast and I'm so glad to have had you as a guest. You have shared a lot of wonderful insights. Uh I initially was thinking of having you talk about uh even including the topics of sexuality and uh like growing up and relationships into this podcast but then it would uh extend too long. So I think we can ha- record another podcast and focus specifically on that. Oh, absolutely. I I certainly would be um glad to come back on and talk about, you know, how we deal with our ourselves as it relates to sex and sexuality growing up. Right, you know, right. Because I felt that this was a very very important and needed conversation and uh, you you really uh did a good job at uh speaking and uh, answering the questions in the sense I'm sure this is this will be very valuable because this this was exactly what I wanted a podcast which talked about uh self esteem during the teen years and uh, the second part to this podcast which we'll record about relationships and uh whether we should be single or get into a relationship and the dynamics of uh the genders and the hormones and the rejection, the rejection. Yeah, when we talk about yeah, when we talk about sex, we can talk about rejection, yes. relationships, how to deal with rejection, how to right. deal with your own sexuality when right. you know. And that'll that will bring yes. into that will bring a new layer of this whole uh talk about self-confidence and self-esteem because that is a very important part of the teenage years. So, yes. uh we will be seeing you again on the next podcast or the series of this podcast with you and we'll talk about relationships and uh sexuality and uh rejection on that podcast and i'm sure it'll be as interesting and as this one uh till then yes thank you uh thank you dennis yeah look at both yes me too you're welcome no problem fun <laughs> really and uh i thank my listeners you can find dennis on facebook uh his uh, i'll paste his link in the show notes but his name is d e n n i s r s u l m i n dennis r salmon m e n m s u m i n salmon yes some s u m s u m like the sum and then s u m and then lin dennis r salmon yeah cool Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll stop the recording and uh, don't go away we'll just speak for a while. Yeah 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 I'm I'm here. Yeah just stop. I do the same thing like I'll can't stop the recording we can still talk about the recording. Awesome. Yeah I do the same thing. There there that was the podcast wasn't it lovely? Uh I hope you took immense value from this podcast. You found immense value in this podcast and please remember to share it. Also if you could listen to this podcast on Radio Public that would be super helpful to me because Radio Public uh helps the podcasters by giving them 2 cents for each listen and it's completely free at your end so uh that way we are able to inch a step closer towards sustaining a podcast a podcast has its expenses 
and uh, in the long in the long run i will be needing to sustain it on my own so uh, i am trying my best and this is one of the steps which could help me so if you like my content and you like this podcast the tushar show you can find this on radio public in at this in the same name the tushar show and you'll hear exactly the same content there but you'll be helping me in a great way also you can contact dennis uh through the links that i have shared i'll also be putting those links in the show notes and uh look out for the next episode with him i hope 